previously on NYPD Blue. Yeah, Detective Connie McDowell is supposed to report to Lieutenant Fancy. What for? Burroughs said you were short on manpower and you need another body over here. Did they say how long he'd be assigned? No, they didn't. Little Bertie tells me he's going good with you and my niece. Mm. Had some nice dinners. You just want to get this out of the way up front. When you two get hitched, you can call me Uncle Eddie. And I don't see what you'd have against me and you kicking back. The chances of something awkward happening is good reason for us not kicking back. So what time should I pick you up? Didn't you hear what I said? Well, you said you got nothing against going out. There's just a nice chance we have a good time. Eight o'clock? Well, where's something nice? Don't worry about me. So anyway, that's my new thing. I don't look back and think about what I could have done, and I don't put it off. I really want to live now. So what's next on your list? Bungee jumping. You're next on my list, Andy. Katie, it's me. Listen, uh, when you're all at the zoo, would you keep an eye on that blue jacket he's wearing? Yeah. Well, he's supposed to be wearing it. Uh, we don't like the color or something. He tried to ditch it in the car when I dropped him off. Yeah. Uh huh? Anyways, if you could see it doesn't end up in the lost and found or pawned off to another classmate for pudding. No, that's it. Uh, tell him I said to have fun. Okay, thanks. Here, get a plate number. I'm a cop. Call 911. Did you get that plate? Son of a bitch. Where the hell did he go? Son of a bitch. I fired, they drove off. Then I told the looky loose super to call 911. They ever returned fire? <clears throat> I saw muzzle flash. You sure it was theirs? Sometimes you think it's your own flash reflected in their windshield. I know the difference. I saw their muzzle flash. Yes, used at the scene. The donut search. Anyone hit you know of? I heard yelling as they pulled off, but mostly for the driver to hit the gas. So they scoot which direction? Up First Avenue. I had it back to my car. At that point, I saw the victim was gone. Anyone see him split? No. Can you give any indication why I want to? Uh, he was late for church, I don't know. Was he reluctant to get in the car? It wasn't a kidnapping. Any conversation in the car? And what was his attitude? 
He was pretty shaken up. Three black males just walked into the Bellevue ER. All three with gunshot wounds. Gotta be your guys. What's their condition? Uh, one of them's grazed, the other two are rocky. We're heading down there. The Jones and Middleboy? They're responding to a bar robbery from last night. Okay, I'll ride with you. Come down when you finish with the duty, Captain. See, can you make an ID? You see I'm good enough to make an ID? Yeah. So, Detective, when was your last tour of duty? Yesterday, 8 to 4. You do any drinking last night? Captain, this was a clean shoot. I'm not saying it wasn't, Detective. But I gotta ask the question. I wasn't drinking last night. I'm sober four and a half years. Hey, Gibson. How simple? Is everything all right? Everything's fine. I'm hearing he hit all five perps. There were three perps. <laughs> now it's a fish story. Yeah, what do we got here? Three white males come in right after closing. Ski mask, clear the till, clean out the bartender, waitress, and three regulars. Two of the perps take one of the patrons into the woman's bathroom and rape her. She's at Bellevue. Anything to go on? Rape victim said they pulled their masks up in the bathroom, but she wasn't in any kind of shape to get into details. Now, where's everybody else? I interviewed them and let them go. All they got was the car and the first two numbers of the plate. Plate model, uh, white Chevy. Can I get those names? Give Andy my best. Hey, you guys. Hey. What are you doing here? The borough sent me. I guess you guys are short again today? <sighs> Anyway, I talked to Lieutenant Fancy. He said to meet you here. Okay, uh, we got a stick of rape. We'll be heading over to Bellevue. How about you interview the rape victim? Sure. So we're done here? Yeah, I, I tell you what, why don't you uh, check out the ladies' room? That's where the rape took place. Has crime scene processed it? Yeah, but check and see if anything got missed. You got it. Is it me? Or does every time one of our guys gets in a spot, she shows up? Well, like she said, both times we've been man short. Pretty innocent looking. Someone you'd never expect. So that makes an informant for internal affairs? I'm just saying, it's weird. Oh, great. I don't remember her asking a whole lot of personal questions last time. You think IAB rushes into things? You been watching JFK again? Just watch what you say around her until I make some phone calls. All right, all right, fine. I'm Detective McDowell. These are Detectives Jones and Metaboy. Can you tell me what happened? My roommate had her new boyfriend over, and she asked if I could, you know, go somewhere else. So I called my friend Patty and had her meet me at the Chatterbox because it's so close to my apartment. And um, I called my roommate at 1, but she didn't answer. So I thought, I'll give them until 2.30. I mean, it's not like I even hang out at that bar all the time or anything. Ellen, the guys who did this, can you tell me anything about them? Um, masks. They had masks and they were white. Did they ever remove their masks? In the bathroom. Could you identify them if you saw them again? I think so. I mean, I've been drinking and um in the bathroom they had my face pushed in the sink but somewhere in there you think you got a good look i think so shot burke i'm detective sorenson this is detective russell lieutenant fancy you hear any news on my cousin or deshaun doctor said your cousin's out of surgery he's stable still working on deshaun and that psycho really blew a chunk out of his neck I've never seen so much blood. Why don't you tell us what happened? Me and Anthony, we were driving to Sean home. When we were stopped at this light, and out of nothing, this big white guy runs up and starts spraying bullets. Rewind a bit, Asada. Where were you coming from? This after hours club on D. We saved the robots. Now, you do any drinking there? Any dope or ecstasy? No, we weren't drinking. And we don't do drugs. Well, you must have been out of place. Because that club is a well-known pharmaceutical clearinghouse. To us, it's a dance club. Me and Anthony had a two-hour drive back to school. So we were sober. What time did you leave the club, Asada? About 6.15. Walking or driving? We were driving. We were shot at in a car. So you were never walking on 8th yeah. toward 1st Avenue? No. 
Never came on a tall white guy who you maybe asked to empty his pockets? What are you talking about? Round the block from where you were shot up, two black guys ripped off a white kid at gunpoint and split in a Jetta matching yours. The crime was witnessed by a cop, Asada. So start easing off your ambush scenario. The guy who shot us was a cop? About now, I'd start thinking how getting us your gun could help shave time off in jail. I don't know about any gun, and we were not doing a stick-up. Either give a statement or get picked out of a lineup, in which case the judge will never hear your side of it. All he'll see is an uncooperative prick, too stupid to move out of the way of a wrecking ball. Stupid doesn't put you on the dean's list at Albany State. And it didn't put my cousin in either, so maybe this wasn't our fault. Maybe your cop don't know one Jetta from another. He just picks one and starts blasting. Oh, he was blasting on account of the gun in his face. No, we didn't have a gun. Now you're bothering the other patients, Mr. Burke. Then for all our sake, leave me alone. Where's this, uh, Jetta of yours, Asada? We gotta take a look at it. In the parking lot. Knock yourselves out. Don't get too comfortable. The guy will talk to the rape victim, but up to now, nothing. She didn't get a good look in his face. Well, she indicated they might have taken a mass off at that point, but uh, they had to turn around. Yeah, we'll check with the patrol, see when any stops in the area last night. How'd it go in there? He says they're, uh, innocent college kids. He said Andy rolled on them, because he mistook the car. And no way that happened. What's your story? We got a little problem. I don't want you going in there right now. Why not? This kid's trying to float you shot up the wrong car. Impossible. Not possible. You're absolutely certain it was the same car. It was the car. Those were the guys. All right. But until we get your witness, we can't prove this kid's lying. Russell and Sorensen will be canvas. Meantime, be patient. We're going back to the house. We're on it, Andy. Don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Driver. Want to be number one here. Put him in in three three. Stick him in the poke and the other one downstairs. What's this? Our uniforms grabbed them up. I can see that. Uh, they fit descriptions of our suspects in the uh, in the bar stick up. What descriptions? I thought they were ski masks. Robbery squad had a pattern on three white males doing stick ups with ski masks, driving a late model white Chevy, and that's what these three guys were driving when they got pulled over. But with no ski masks. Yeah, it started off as a series of parking garage stick ups three months ago. Recently switched to uh, bars and grills and restaurants. Any rapes? No, this will be the first. So you sure you weren't driving around at 11 a.m. with ski masks on? I meant on their person. So, I'm in on these interviews? Yeah. Hey. How's it going? Take this. Why'd the cops have to chase you for eight blocks before you pulled over? It's more like three blocks. I couldn't find a place to pull over. In the future, just as a general heads up, don't do crimes with two other guys. It opens the circle up too much. That's true. You found that too? Oh, definitely. It's hard enough staying friends with one guy, making sure one guy doesn't run his mouth for whatever reason. But two other guys? I I I've never seen three guys hold up. Last night at the Chatterbox. Chatterbox? Isn't that a bar? Yeah. When you and your friends were seen driving away from after you robbed it. Yeah, well, we were driving around last night. Sticking up the bar, I think I would have remembered that. You gamble much, Jake? Who's playing? You're betting 10 years that one of your two buddies isn't going to tell us about what happened. And whoever does gets the deal. The other two get the time. You know, this would really make a whole lot more sense to me if I knew what the hell you were talking about. All right, Jake. We're going to make you stand in a lineup. You can make me stand on my head. I didn't do nothing. I already spoke to the chief of these. I've been fielding calls from the press. The commissioner's aiming to get a soundbite on the 6 o'clock news. Can't give you much. Beyond investigations ongoing. My general sense, that won't satisfy the commissioner. He wants to announce an arrest? Meaning the arrest of the stick-up kids? If that pans out. And if it doesn't? An afternoon to clear cop with 22 years on the job. This is from the ivory tower, Lieutenant, not from me. And I'm not saying anyone's taking a position. Personally, I hope it pans out. This is fancy.
pleasant chat. He just reiterated the need to corroborate your story. Just came in to reiterate. Nothing about consequences, heat from the brass. Commissioner wants a statement on the 6 o'clock news. That I'm a caller? My tens was vague. Guess that's going around. Downtown call. Don't want you to head to Left Rack City. See the shrink. <sighs> Usually I give you a few days to settle down. Any sense of trying to get in front of something? Maybe get an early collar on a psycho cop likes to spray bullets? Andy, Martin said no one's taken a position thus far. You can tell. Whatever he says. I guarantee no one around here has. I don't need to tell you. Watch what you say to the shrink. Don't want to let my wacky side show. Uh, an another reporter, Lieutenant. This one's from the Post. Referring to DCPI. And anyone else from now on. Brings your counselor. Keep him close by on that Sipowitz shooting. Also heard you had suspects on that rape at the Chatterbox Bar. How's that going? Yeah, we're trying to get them off their stories. They're going to run lineups for the rape victim. All right, I'll be taking a statement in anti-crime if you uh, need me. You have a nice time the other night. I, I do recall a few smiles, and you did laugh once or twice. I was taking time to phrase my answer. Yes. I had a nice time the other night. And you need time to phrase that? Well, a situation like this, it's best to be careful so no one gets the wrong idea. Like, uh, like maybe uh, another date's in order? Baldwin, has it crossed your mind that there's a real opportunity here for conflict of interest? There's no regulation against detectives and ADAs. My research indicates it can work fairly well, if you want it to. You go on the internet? <laughs> I made a, a passing inquiry to Andy Sipowitz. Well, I don't know if Sipowitz is the best place to get advice right now, but... Because he's working out a jackpot? You're confident it'll get worked out. Did they recover those kids' weapon? Andy says it was a good shoot. I believe that. Why don't you? I'm not saying I don't believe it was a good shoot. It's just, given his reputation and certain stories you hear... Such as? The drinking, for one. Ancient history. When a dinosaur like Sipowitz unloads on a car full of black kids and it ends up a possible jackpot, it just, it wouldn't surprise me if it stayed a jackpot. Well, it would surprise the hell out of me. And regardless of his past, he's the best damn detective I've ever met, dinosaur or not. I'll call if I need you for a lineup. I'm sorry, but all press inquiries are being referred to the Deputy Commissioner of Public Information. Hold on a sec, I'll get it for you. 20 calls a day, not one of them has a number for DCPI. Where's Andy? Life Rack City, he's seeing the department psychiatrist. Hey, he needs to look at this. White kid's wallet under a parked car two blocks from the shrink. License specs fit Andy's description. Eli Beersley, address in Soho. Thanks to Life Rack, so Andy can get a look at it. I'll get him on the phone. Tell him it's on the way. How about that? How do you do, Mrs. Bidsley? Oh, Beth, please. The, uh, the doorman mentioned names when he called up, but I forgot. Diane Russell, Danny Sorensen. And I'm not sure I know what this is regarding. Um, actually, we were hoping to speak to your son. Why? Well, he's not in any kind of trouble, Mrs. Beardsley. We uh, found his wallet, and we just wanted to ask if it had been stolen. Is he here, ma'am? I just got back from my trainer, so I'm not sure. I'll go check. Your attitude indicates the kids had prior trouble. Mm. BCI had him clean, but any rich kid trot in First Avenue at 6.30 isn't helping the needy. Probably 10, 15 grand for this. I ought to pick one up for my bedroom. They would get lost in the dirty laundry. Forgot you had intimate knowledge. Of the bedroom area, I meant. Now I don't know what I meant. Eli, these are the detectives, um... Russell and Sarnes. Yeah. Yeah, she said you guys found my wallet. Yeah, someone dumped it under a parked car near First Avenue. You know, Eli, if it's all the same to you, we'd prefer having this conversation down at the station house. Why? I don't understand. He can look at our mug books down there, see if he recognizes who stole his wallet. Oh, well, I mean, there's nobody to recognize. I, I lost it two days ago. It wasn't stolen maybe this morning? 
No, it's been a couple of days. I, it fell out of my pocket on the subway. And if you got it on you, though, I could use the ID tonight. Uh, it's at the station house. Any chance you were downtown near 9th and 1st Ave around 6.30 this morning? No, he said he lost it two days ago. Forget it, Mom. I wasn't there. I was here sleeping. So. Eli, if you want to come by the station house later, we'll be there and we'll be happy to return your wallet. Or a stake passport ID. You guys can just drop it in the mail. You sure you don't want to come down? Yeah. Is that it? All right. Thanks for your time. That kid's pure skill, Diane. Skilly eyes, skilly habits. Just no drug collars and nothing putting them downtown. No way he's telling the truth. Danny, I'm trying to think of a way to go at him. Hey, uh, what's your name? Pete Vitello. Yeah, what do you know about the kid in 6E? He lives here. What can you tell us about him? Not a lot. You know, it's, it's not my business. You've been here a while, right? You tight with the tenants? Most of them. We know you don't want to talk out of school, but uh, we need to know a few things on this kid. Look, nothing specific, just a general sense of his character. And if you ever need assistance, or if a family member does, or a cousin, or a friend, or acquaintance, I don't care. You call me. He's a major pain in the balls. The mother, too. It's like your dirt. He keep odd hours? He's a partier. He's pretty serious about it. Like, uh, drinking serious? Like he's done a few stints in drug rehab. You see him come in this morning about 6.45 or 7 o'clock? Uh, I come on at 8. The night guy'd know. You have his home phone? Yeah, yeah. I'll call him first. Let him know it's all right to talk. But so you know, he's uh, got a habit of dozing off at work. One last favor. If the kid leaves, call the cell number on that card. No problem. Pete, you're a fine American. Detective, how does it make you feel that the shooting is presently questionable? I'm confident it'll work itself out. That's an intellectual response. I want to know how you feel about it. I suppose a little anxious to put it to bed. Where do you think that anxiety is coming from? Spain. Seriously, detective. Do you think you're feeling anxiety because at root, you feel you may have possibly been in the wrong? No, it was a good shoot. How do you feel about black people? What's that got to do with anything? Duty captain's report says that you rounded back after witnessing two black youths walking behind a white youth. Yeah, they were scoping them out. When you passed, they were separated by about 50 feet, you said. From that distance, how could you possibly know what they were doing? I got enough years on the job to read body language. Would you have rounded back if the two black youths had been white? They weren't. Certain folks in this field would say that that kind of answer, or lack thereof, is essentially a guilty admission. So, by not saying anything, what I'm really saying is, I only went back because those kids were black. Now, take it a step further and ask yourself, did I only shoot because they were black? I shot because they had a gun on me. Which hasn't been found. What is this, huh? What are you trying to get me to admit? Just the truth. Did I roll around the block again because these kids were black? Maybe. But I might have done the same thing if they were white. I don't know, because they weren't. What I do know for damn sure is I shot at that car because there was a gun pointing at me. That's it. No colors, no black, no white, just the gun. If you rolled on them because of a prejudice, detective, you can't just divorce yourself from that when it comes to the shooting. You know what, Doc? I've had about enough of this crap. I'm leaving. Detective Sipowitz, we have 42 minutes left. Yeah, well, stick them in your ass. This will be reflected in my report, detective. Stick your report in your ass, too. Is anyone here? This is the last lineup. Don't worry about that. Just tell us if you recognize anyone. Okay, but the guys who rate me, are they in this lineup? If you recognize someone from last night, then tell us. Number four. Relax in there a minute, guys. Number four is one of the guys who raped me. Come on, let's go talk outside. Wait, he's one of them, right? Number four? No. Can I just see that first lineup again? It's okay if you don't recognize anyone. I've been drinking. I had, I had my face shoved in the sink. I couldn't see. I know. Okay, so what is going to happen now? They're just going to get free? Come on. You're here from Danny and Diane? 
Well, last I heard, they were at Beards' apartment. They should be here in a minute. You all done with the shrink? It wrapped up quick. I'm interested how they made out. The shrink report will not be favorable. Guys, she couldn't ID. There should be a different crowd at the bar by now, so we'll go back and re-canvas. And we're having the owner meet us there. Yeah, how's she doing? McDowell. Well, I think she's doing fine. Me too. But I had some initial reservations, and I made a couple of calls. She's not with the IAB. Yeah, that's what I found out. But she pulls away? Yeah, absolutely. I got the facts. Where's that kid, Beardsley? He wouldn't cop to it, any. Wouldn't cop to what? Wouldn't cop to being down there at all. That was the kid. The same one from the photo. We know it. Guys, inside. Pick the suspect first. Make sure we know where to find him. Uh, chances are Beardsley was on the street this morning copping dope, and he didn't want to admit it in front of his mother. The doorman confirms he comes in loaded. Kid's a skill. I didn't get that hit off him. Dorman see Beardsley come in this morning? No, and we checked with the night guy who didn't recall, but was probably asleep. Did you make any attempt to get him away from his mother? We tried, but the mother blocked it. So we're no place. All right, uh, we're going to change into soft clothes, and we're going to sit on the kid's place, and we're going to tail him until hopefully he makes a move to cop. Will he be checking in with his schedule? Because I'll see to it that Gay John keeps the phones clear. We figure he'll head out soon, seeing how he lost his money getting mugged, and he's been at home all morning waiting for his mom and her purse to get back from the gym. Then you better get going. No one's giving up, Andy. Do you have faith I did the right thing this morning? I believe your story, if that's what you're asking. Because I, I don't care what else happens here, as long as you know that I did the right thing out there. If you're asking, do I think it's possible you shot at a car full of kids just because they're black? I don't. That means a lot. I have respect for you. I have respect for you, too. Detective Sipowitz, Cynthia Bunin for you. Hey, Cynthia, how's it going? Huh, why wouldn't I be okay? Well, Eddie shouldn't have got you ruffled. It's, uh, it's just some administrative things need straightening out. Now, sure, I'd always get you tense, but I'm all right. Now, there's nothing to worry about. Hey, listen, uh, my lieutenant's calling me. I, I better call you back later, all right? Yeah. Okay, bye. Tommy Riedel? Right here. Detective Jones, Metaboy and McDowell. I've asked around people who were here last night, people in the neighborhood, three white kids with ski masks. That's it. What did you see? A gun in my face, then the floor. Excuse me, sir. Could you move for us, please? I'd prefer not to. Well, I'd prefer that you did. So do me a favor and work on your afternoon heater at one of the tables over there. This is my stool. I drink my drinks right here. Branch out a little. Go ahead, Ernie. Next round's on me. I should hope so. There you go. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh... You should leave now, Ernie. Now, this is a half hour after closing. The place is locked up, but I had a couple of friends in here. I unlocked the door to let one of my friends out. They all three came busting in. How long have you owned this place? 
16 years. How long have you run it? The whole time. Get your ass in here. Now I'm going to tell you this one time. Don't play dumb with me. Your problems will be compounded. Because that's a felony. And a felon and his liquor license are soon parted. Problems with employees stealing money. I checked the tape just for security. Yeah? With your pants around your ankles? That's not true. Where's the VCR? In my cabinet, in my office. You recorded last night's rape? Uh, I'm not sure. When we check the VCR, the tape that's in there will have the rape on it? I'm not sure. If there's a fresh tape in the VCR, Tommy, which would indicate that you pulled the one from last night showing the rape, you better tell me now. There's a new tape in the VCR. Where's the tape from last night with the rape on it? At my apartment. I'm out of here before I do something wrong. What are you thinking about? How cornered I'd feel if I was in Andy's shoes. I was a basket case looking at getting thrown off the job, but this. I'm facing real charges, maybe a night in jail. I'd be huddled in a corner. I don't mean to bring up something if it's a dead topic, but we had a bit of an uncomfortable moment in this apartment earlier. The uh, intimate knowledge of your apartment. It was completely unintentional. I guess, uh, given our history, there are certain minefields we may step into time to time. Yeah, on the way to a comfortable status quo. A rocky step occasionally, and then, uh, smooth sailing. But no offense taken? Of course not. Good, because I felt like a complete idiot. So did I. There's our boy. Sorry, sir. Great, Pete, thanks. That was Pete the doorman with a heads up on Beardsley. Lesson being, don't treat your doorman like dirt. Yeah, I'll remember that when I have one. The world's fault, you're a dope fiend. My wife hated. Made me shave it off. I'll catch up with you. Hey, hey, hey. So what happened this morning? I came in with my belt off the loop. That make the wire service too? What are we talking about? You playing Associated Press to your niece, Cynthia. Or she got some other precinct mole filled her in on my shooting. Andy, you just came up in conversation. Well, I don't like being a subject to your conversations, Eddie. You know, she was my niece before she was your girlfriend. Girlfriend. We had a few dinners, Gibson. And regardless of our relationship status, my business in this house stays in this house. All right? Until I say different. I agree to that entirely. But situation like this, how are you going to blame me? I mean, it's somehow it's vital information to her. I was involved in a shooting. It just came up in conversation. Or you're giving her heads up that it's a potential jackpot. You know, I got nothing but confidence this will work out. Jess, you'll be jumping off the ship about now and inviting all family to join suit. Andy, I have nothing but the best intentions. See, now I know why Giuliani didn't give you guys no raise. You do, huh? Yeah, because you guys are clueless. Hey, so don't go blaming the mayor for getting stiff. Blame yourselves. You deserve it. Lodge these two idiots in the cells. Don't let this moron get to you. Hey, don't sweat it, Mitch, all right? They're just dicking us around. Bye, Jake. So what we're looking at, Mitch, is after the three you heisted the chat box. Jake watched the front door while you and Terry took that woman into the bathroom and raped her. Just because you keep saying that doesn't mean I'll believe it. You ever seen what it looks like? A girl getting raped? No. Maybe you should. Maybe you should see what you look like raping a woman. You'll be pushing up your ski mask here in a second, Mitch. So will Terry. Look at what you did last night. Look. Look at her. Look at what you did to her. I'll drive your head to the tube. We were high. Yeah, we were too high. 
Unless you want a jury in a courtroom with your friends and family to see that, you better tell us what happened. Okay, just turn it off. Come on, just turn it off. All right, look, first things first. I can have my lawyer here in like two minutes, and he's tough. They call him the Barracuda. Yeah. Should we call your mother and have her arrange it? Which brings us to our second thing. I won't call the Barracuda if there's any way that we can make sure that she stays ignorant of what happened this morning. You go first, Eli. No, I need a written guarantee that this won't get back to her. Oh, you're not getting the situation, Eli. Your balls all shriveled from junk use. They're ours for the breaking. But if you make full disclosure on what happened on the street this morning, maybe the dope goes away. Then exactly what time am I going to get out of here? Because you missed your wake-up shot, and then with us coming along this afternoon, you're getting a little itchy? This morning, were you on 9th and 1st? Yes. Doing what? Scoring. I was on my way home. Two black guys jumped me, they put a gun to my head, and they grabbed my wallet. And you're dope? A plainclothes cop, he pulled up, and he stopped him. It might have saved your life. Yeah, but he couldn't save the dope. Keep going before you get a smack. Told me to get in his car, and we chased him until we saw him stopped at a light. And you know this is the same car. Why? I recognized the guy in the back seat. He had the gun. You saw the gun? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of hard to miss. It was like nickel-plated, really ghetto fabulous. At what point did you duck out? <laughs> when he pulled out the gun, the cop unloaded. I was like, later. All right, I need you to write everything down you just said. You could have said that before. Maybe saved us a little time. I hate to break it to you, Eli, but you've got a few more chores to do. Viewing a lineup, so forth, it's going to take some time. Exactly how much time? So you're sweating like you made the cops sweat today. Right. I'll call my tens. Get you up on to bring the kid from the hospital. Telephone, Lieutenant. What? Andy? Kid on the rape robbery is writing a statement. Good work. Uh, that's a hell of a thing about Sipowitz. I guess next time, with a situation like this, I should give it time to shake out. You could lighten up a bit, too. Maybe that, too. Got dinner plans? You asking me out? Let me get back to you. At your leisure, Detective. Hey. Um, let me tell you, it's 8 o'clock. I'll see you there. Got it? You got a minute? Good work on that rape robbery today. Thanks. You get along all right overall? Fine. So, career-wise, you partial to floating from squad to squad? Or would you prefer settling down? It would have to be in the right squad. Is this the right squad? Absolutely. Great. Bro, call. You've been assigned. I hope that's okay with you. <laughs> Happy to be here. Bird kid wrapped up? Yeah. I'm a cousin at the hospital. Diane called and said he flipped. Apparently, the two college kids, they like to reconnect with their street pal in between midterms, so they do stick-ups to prove they still got street chops. How's his condition? The one that was in surgery. Oh, stable. Glad of that. Danny, uh, I can't express enough gratitude. It's all in a day's work. Don't be an idiot now. Seriously, though, you've gotten me out of a lot of scrapes and one very serious jackpot. I'm happy that I could pay back even part of that. You did good work today. You're a good cop. It means a lot. <laughs>